very warm good evening to everyone present here so today our uh, session is having two parts so the first one is career guidance and insights from our alumni so i welcome our alumni rishi kashyap balaji to the session so basically by profession he is a chemical engineer so he has completed his chemical engineering from amrita coimbatore campus he is a passed out in year 2019 and he is also a uh, he has also won the institution silver medal he is a silver medalist at the year 2019 and he has a uh, lot more years of experience in his field and he is currently working as uh, working in axo noble and his position as assistant manager who is responsible for production and uh, planning operations so i welcome you sir to this event and uh, over to you sir uh, thank you very much uh so uh, very happy to be here uh, amongst all of you i cannot say see uh, so uh, uh, it's still very uh, great to be here amongst a lot of students i think who are asp aspiring to become engineers in the near future and uh, probably uh, you know uh, most of them would also come to amrita eventually becoming uh, uh, you know my juniors so very happy to be interacting with you on this occasion um So, sir, actually, we are not able to view you. Uh... Actually, my video is not uh, okay. switching on because the host has stopped it. Okay, okay. Just give me a minute. Parvati, can you please check this? Uh, sir can you please just try once again sure just give me a second yeah it's completely fine so hi students we have our alumni with us so be ready with your questions you can type it in the chat box maybe uh, i'll be reading out those questions and uh, he'll give you i think most of you have lot of questions in your mind to ask our alumni uh, Maybe related to the scholarships, maybe related to placements, how he was studying, how he was into the course called engineering, and all those things. So please type the questions that you want to uh, want our alumni to be addressed. So I also have some questions for you. So my first question is like, I know you have completed chemical engineering. So was it your plan? It's like you have pre-planned, like, or you have that plan, like you want to be an engineer after twelfth. So here we have a set of uh, future engineering aspirants who are listening to your voice. Uh, sir, actually, you are on mute. Sorry. So I think uh, I should say yes. I think uh, for quite some time it was my plan to become an engineer, and uh, probably that would have to start with the fascination for science that I had from a really young age. so um, you know from uh, a very young age like i was interested in uh, in science i was looking around things i found in nature i really liked it so there was naturally a curiosity to learn more about it and eventually when i went about doing it i i i realized probably that being an engineer is uh, you know one of the most practical ways in the contemporary world to be pursuing science and technology in a way that can probably impact uh, a lot of uh, lives and also kind of learn uh, a lot of new stuff and make a great career in so uh, yes i think uh, though i did have a lot of other interests as well i think uh, uh, it was certainly clear to me that i should probably start off by being an engineer i'm sorry we have lot more questions in the chat box and what i thought i would ask is there in the chat box and the question was by omar sharif so he has asked why did you choose engineering despite uh, it's like engineering graduates mostly in india are not getting jobs and why specifically chemical engineering just because you loved chemistry or what was the factor that you made uh, that made you to choose chemical engineering okay great so um you know addressing the first part of the question so why did i choose engineering despite the fact that a lot of graduates are not getting jobs so there are two ways of looking at it so uh, you know 
unemployability, if you want to talk about it, is something that is prevalent across disciplines. And uh, one reason why we probably say that a lot of engineers are unemployed is simply because there is a great amount of supply of engineers. We have so many engineering colleges in the country these days because there is naturally a lot of interest for students to become engineers. But there is also the, the availability of good quality engineers who are employable. So for example, from the side of industry, I can really tell you that we still want a lot of engineers to come and work. And uh, when we start looking for engineers, when we start scouting among the candidates, we really find that the employability levels at some times is quite less. So there is a lot of scope for engineers to get jobs. It is true that some of them do not get jobs you know, to start off, but I think it's still a very exciting field to pursue. So from my perspective, it was not first about job. It was, I think, to start off with, uh, you know, like I said, my curiosity. Definitely, I did also have a fear about not getting jobs, but, uh, you know, that's probably, you know, true for any other discipline. So I said, okay, fine, let's just try it and see what happens. So that's how it was. And to, to go to the second part of the question, so why chemical engineering? Uh, yes, partly because I liked chemistry a lot and uh, the other fields of engineering were kind of removed from it. But uh, I also was quite of, uh, uh, clear that there are certain areas of engineering that I wanted to work in. So one of that was at that point in time, uh, you know, biotechnology. And uh, the other was probably, uh, you know, renewable energy. So when I was looking at which field would probably put me in a great position to work in either of these areas, you know, depending on what interest I had at that, you know, point in time, I saw that there were a few disciplines which could do that. So one among those was chemical engineering. And it, as a field, it's kind of very vast and very exhaustive. And it gives you the background to go pursue these new areas which are coming up in the field today. So yes, that's that's the reason why I chose chemical engineering. Wow, that that's really great. So it's like basically uh, most of the students don't have an idea about what's there in chemical engineering. Even almost all the people is not having an idea about what's there in chemical engineering. Can you please brief about what they'll be doing or what the chemical engineers are doing? Which all topics are there which are really interesting in the chemical engineering sector and all? Okay, so probably, you know, kind of touching upon the last question, the, the name the name of the field of, you know, chemical engineering, it can be a little misleading. So if you look at uh, the engineering itself, sometimes it's best to probably call it process engineering, because as chemical engineers, the, the, the foundational uh, uh, definition of the stream kind of goes like saying it is the stream of engineering, which is concerned with converting raw materials into value added products and that can be towards anything so for example you know let us start from the most common most famous application uh, of chemical engineering which is you know petroleum refining so you look at something like crude and you convert it into so many different products like petroleum diesel kerosene and all other plastic products which are value added that is one field where chemical engineers play a lot of uh, uh, you know significant roles and so many other things as well. For example, pharmaceuticals. So you have a lot of raw materials and you need to convert them into medicines so that people can use them to get better. And how are you going to be able to, uh, be able to do it? Because you need to set up processes at the industrial levels to produce certain chemicals, you know, which are uh, proven by science to be effective for some kind of diseases. So this is the kind of uh, uh, questions that you tackle as a chemical engineer. And in doing so, you know, there are a lot of things that, uh, uh, you know, a chemical engineer needs to do. So the first thing is to kind of understand the foundational principles of engineering. For example, when you're saying that you're going to be dealing with chemicals and uh, materials, you need to first understand the chemistry. So this is where I think the chemical part of the uh, name kind of proves uh, to be kind of significant because the other engineering disciplines are kind of slightly removed from uh, the chemistry because the application areas towards those areas are slightly limited. So for example, if you talk about something like computer science engineering, you're not really talking about uh, molecules or how they behave. There's, there's, there's no uh, significant need for you to understand that to be a computer science engineer. But just like it is important for an electrical engineer or an electronics engineer to understand the fundamental principles of electricity, how it works, 
chemical engineer you know needs to understand the chemistry of substances and that's where you know uh, uh, the chemistry link also comes in and these days the field is also growing a little bit so there is also the living uh, uh, life sciences aspects that's coming into it so there's a good amount of biology that you need to understand as well if you want to eventually become a biochemical engineer so lots of exciting prospects in the field i must say uh, actually that was a great answer and uh, i also received some idea about yeah this is what chemical engineers are doing so the next question is from ayush sharma so it's like students have heard that you are a silver medalist and they are asking questions like as you are a silver medalist how was your college life did you enjoy and studied in the last month or were you consistent every day with minimal enjoyment what was your strategy okay <laughs> so did i enjoy my college life yes did i enjoy it as much as uh, uh, the non silver medalists maybe no but did i enjoy learning definitely yes so um in terms of my strategy i would say that uh, uh, you know i after uh, entering college i made it a priority to not focus on marks it uh, was rather on the understanding uh, and uh, you know the uh, depth of uh, gaining knowledge is what i kind of always wanted to do and uh, as a consequence of uh, uh, kind of you know doing this marks were you know i think a natural consequence so uh, i did not really uh, you know focus on getting marks because there are ways to do that you can you know all of us are very talented we can even uh, you know sit through the night pull and all nighter and get good marks on the exam the next day so that was not how i went about i kind of paid a lot of attention to the lectures i interacted with professors and my uh, fellow students and seniors on a regular basis where we all talked about a lot of subject matter stuff that we all found interesting and uh, eventually from that learning marks just came by wow so the next question is like uh, maybe when hearing the term chemical it's like everyone feel like there will be some risk so do chemical engineers have that risk in their profession or what that is happening in the industry see naturally when you are dealing with substances uh, there is a great or a certain amount of risk that is involved but one of the uh, 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 you know important principles these days that industries are operating in you know everybody understands that people do not want to put them in unsafe positions each other in unsafe positions so any chemical industry today has a great amount of focus on safety for example when i joined axo nobel one of the first things that i was told is nothing you do is worth getting hurt for so the company has a great amount of focus on safety and not it's just not this company every other chemicals company has a great amount of focus on safety keeping yourself safe at work so we definitely do not put ourselves in dangerous positions but it is certainly slightly more riskier than let us say uh, 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 you know uh, uh, another field where let us say you are uh, uh, doing something like a tanking so there is not much of a risk unless there is some kind of a terrorist attack that is going to happen in your tank you're just sitting in a bank but you're here you might be exposed to stuff but it's it's quite safe and uh, you know um, there are not uh, uh, undocumented ununderstood substances around us so it's pretty safe and risk is there but it's well managed okay uh, so the next question is from payuja so she is asking how were the faculties at amritam shrutya pitam so i have some more questions related to amrita so i think i would read that also so how was your campus life at amrita also how was the faculty how was the campus life at amrita also so tanish also asked this question okay so uh, starting with the faculty i think faculty are quite brilliant so uh, if I, especially i have to talk about my department a lot of faculty had uh, you know experience of working in research and industry a lot of them had uh, educational uh, uh, you know background from uh, a different country outside of india so that kind of brought uh, together a pool of extremely talented uh, extremely inspirational people to learn from and uh, these people uh, you know were also very friendly very approachable uh, for any kind of uh, you know personal or uh, you know academic related queries at all points in time so in fact uh, you know even today it has been somewhere around four and a half three years since i graduated but still i kind of uh, in i'm in touch with a lot of faculty members whether it is uh, uh, for seeking life advice 
twice or it is just to share a meme that I saw it was funny. So for all purposes, we are in touch and uh, you know, everybody is on this life. So academics is, uh, uh, you know, uh, pretty good. So uh, I would say classes are not all that you will do in campus from nine to five. I think lectures will just be one uh, significant, but in, uh, uh, you know, uh, relatively not full part of your day. There are a lot of other stuff that you can do. There are, uh, you know, uh, different clubs on music, for dance, for uh, uh, various kind of technologies that you can be part of. There are different professional societies on different disciplines. For example, there is a, a, a IICHE club, which is the Indian Institution of Chemical Engineers Club in Amrita, which is, uh, and then there are stuff like, if you are a mechanical engineer, there's an SAE club where people try to build their own cars and take it for races. And then there are lots of uh, coding clubs uh, uh, or, you know, uh, these coding competitions that go on at global levels in all the campuses. So on the co-curricular front and extracurricular front, lots of opportunities. And the campus is simply beautiful. I'm sure you must have seen some pictures, but in reality, it is a lot more beautiful. So, uh, you know, people have a great time. I had a great time. And I certainly miss the campus right now. Uh, so there are a lot more questions. And I'm, I'm actually feeling difficult in... Uh, taking of the questions for you so it, one has asked like what are postgraduate fields after chemical engineering so what a chemical engineer can do after that what he can study after that um so as a chemical engineer you could probably study further more chemical engineering for example you can decide to do a master's or phd in chemical engineering or there are other aspects that you can venture into. If you want to do a specialty, for example, you can, if you want to work in the biotechnology industry, the pharmaceutical industry, you can become a biochemical engineer. If you want to focus on health safety, you can become an environmental engineer. You can look at different technologies which we can use to reduce pollution, to reduce the kind of industrial emissions that we have. So that is one uh, prospect. You can always, uh, uh, you know, enter into fields like food, uh, food processing, that is also something that is coming up and it's kind of uh, quite, quite novel. And there is a lot of opportunity these days in materials. So we are developing a lot of new materials these days, which need to be processed at a large scale for you know people to use it, other applications. So that is there. And the semiconductor industry, which you know uh, uh, the present government seems to have a lot of interest in bringing to India, employs a lot of chemical engineers. So that's a, a great uh, opportunity. And this is just the engineering side of things. And the non-engineering uh, you know, field of things is still very open to you. If you want to become, uh, you know, um, if you want to pursue an MBA, you're kind of very open to it with a bachelor's in chemical engineering. If you want to have a career in the government, if you want to become uh, an IAS or something, there's all opportunities for you to pursue that. So I think these are some of the very commonly pursued avenues that I've seen my friends, my seniors do. Okay, the next question is from Aman, and uh, we always like we have an answer for this. So this is, what's the difference between petroleum in and chemical engineering? I think you mean petrochemical engineering and chemical engineering. Okay, so there's uh, petrochemical engineering. It, it is something that focuses exclusively on the processing of uh, you know, crude into different petroleum products. So as an industry, I would say in the chemicals industry, one of the biggest industries is the oil and gas industry. So naturally there was a discipline that was developed to you know, study that in more detail. Uh, chemical engineering is much, much wider. So it is not just about uh, petroleum. So it can be anything about, uh, you know, micro scale processes, like nanotechnology, uh, uh, you know, or like uh, something very uh, uh, different and out of the box, like, for example, food processing. So there is a certain amount of engineering that we need to do when, you know, you have to convert processes, you have to run processes at an industrial scale. So for all these processes, chemical engineering could be, you know, applied. Whereas for petrol, petrochemical engineering or petroleum engineering is kind of focused towards the processes and technologies which are relevant for petroleum processing. So there's not much of a difference. I think petroleum engineering would kind of be a subset of the chemical engineering. Okay. So the next question is from Mega, and she's asking like, do you have job satisfaction in the field that you choose? Yeah, absolutely. 
and that's because probably see we we learn we study a, a, a set of stuff and when we study there's a lot of excitement about how these are going to happen and uh, when you come into the industry and you know uh, see those things happening it's quite quite fascinating to do it for example running a plant you know that's so huge you see from the outside uh, and you know delivering the performance that is expected out of it uh, you know i think it brings about a great deal of satisfaction and since i have worked uh, you know a fair amount in research as well i can tell you that that is also extremely satisfying when you're trying to find out an answer to some question for which nobody in the world has an answer to or nobody is sure about what's going on that is a great level of satisfaction that you can have so now the next question is from nidhan skain so it's like how you rate yourself when you entered into amrita campus and exit from the campus it's like he has mentioned level of personality difference in terms of public speaking and communication uh, is there any difference to that what he is asking <laughs> uh, an exciting question but uh, on that aspect i would say uh, there has been certainly a good amount of growth but i was already a good speaker i think uh, in terms of communication skills and stuff like that i think i most of it up in my school um, i should say the foundations were laid down in my school and definitely amrita has a lot of resources to help you improve that for example we had a, a set of classes on soft skills to help us mold us into good uh, you know communicators so i i do certainly remember learning a lot of important uh, pointers from those sessions but uh, you know i think the foundations definitely do come from years of your schooling i think at least that is true in my case um, but i have seen a lot of my friends who were kind of relatively weaker in english develop into excellent speakers and users of the language by, during their uh, you know tenure during their time in amrita so in case somebody is worried that uh, you know from the language point of view in terms of their soft skills point of view uh, you know is the university going to help them then definitely yes so now the next question is from srishti verma and she is asking what was the contribution of chemical engineering in the corona period and how was your experience is there any contribution that chemical engineers did okay so uh, just to kind of listen is a brilliant question uh, and very timely question um, i'm sure that everybody has heard of the name moderna which is you know one of the uh, companies which manufacture uh, vaccines uh, one of the vaccines that were you know first uh, introduced in the us i am not sure completely if it is available in india at the moment but the company moderna was founded by one of the tallest living chemical engineers in the sense in terms of his stature uh, in mit he's a professor at mit called robert langer so chemical engineers have a great deal to do so like you said uh, there could be uh, you know development of processes there could be developments of products and that particular product would also be a vaccine so uh, in that case i would say yes a lot of contributions uh, if you were wondering during the corona period when everybody was at home how your vaccines got produced and then got shipped to you and then they were delivered to you i think a lot of chemical engineers put their lives at risk came to the factory operated the processes made sure your vaccines were produced on time so there's a great deal of contribution and i think uh, you know all of those chemical engineers have to be extremely proud i was not in the pharmaceutical industry so i was working uh, you know uh, from home for a quite a bit of time and uh, later on much earlier than you know uh, many of the uh, computer science engineers or the it folks who are still at home i went back to the factory as well much earlier so my experience was good you know i never thought as a chemical engineer i would do something called work from home so it was kind of uh, fun to do that so yeah the next question is from anirudh so he is asking uh, the difference between material science engineering and chemical So, material science. So, I think that's again a very nice question. So, in Amrita, the department is is titled Chemical Engineering and Material Science because uh, we kind of uh, do uh, a lot of research in the material science related aspect. But our undergraduate uh, course is on chemical engineering. So, material science engineering is a lot about engineering materials. So, how are you going to create a certain material that you uh, need? so that it kind you know you say that you want your materials to have certain properties so how do you design a material to have those properties 
So those are the kind of questions that material science engineering is, is you know, focused upon. So you try to understand if you know, material has this kind of structure, what kind of property it can lead to, or the other way around, if you want to have a material with these kind of properties, what is the route that which you, know, you have to synthesize it with? So I would say material science engineering as a discipline is much more closer to chemistry is, you know, you know, than chemical engineering is. But chemical engineering, on the other hand, once your material science engineers tell you, okay, hey, see, this is the material that you wanted, and this is the route to synthesize it. Chemical engineers work on scaling up that process to a large scale industrial level and producing that in a very economical and safe way for the big market. So material science engineers work with things that go on in the lab. They create materials for you in the lab. They create processes for you to make those materials in the lab. And chemical engineers try to scale it up. They operate the industries which you know, produce these materials for you at the large scale. But there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, moving between both the fields these days. A lot of my friends have uh, pursued uh, material science engineering as their uh, you know, field after doing a bachelor's in chemical engineering. So in case your interests lie there, then having a foundation in chemical engineering will help you, you, know, you know, to a great extent. So the next question is, uh, maybe students have not thought about a chemical engineer working with laptops. So the question is straightly like, do chemical engineers have this work on laptops, what they were doing? Maybe do the 12 students work on laptop. Is that the question? Yes, yes. Okay. So as a chemical engineer, so I have been working as an engineer right now for about two and a half years. So I do not go and touch any materials. <laughs> <laughs> I do not, uh, uh, you know, on a daily scale, uh, do something like this with uh, test tubes, kind of running reactions. A lot of my work has to do with a laptop and a computer. But in case you were wondering, there is a, a, a discipline within chemical engineering called process systems engineering, which is focused on uh, looking at processes from a very technical perspective, trying to model them, trying to simulate them. So if it's a reaction that you're talking about, we try to simulate that reaction in a computer to understand how it will perform when you actually do it in an industrial setting, or for that matter, even a lab. Or there are stuff like digital twins that are coming up. You create literally a model of a plant on the computer, and you try to understand what will happen if I change these parameters of my plant to you know, kind of make decisions. So um, certainly a lot of computers are involved these days. Uh, there's a, a big area where computational uh, data, data sciences and uh, you know, computational sciences are you know, entering into all fields and chemical engineering is certainly not left. So the next question is from Tanish. So he's asking like, uh, will there be demand for a petroleum engineer maybe in future? So it's like everything is like electric, electric cars and all these are in demand. So will there be a demand for petroleum engineers in future? Uh, so if you look at the current energy landscape, uh, you know, renewable energy is something that is definitely gaining a lot of interest. But, uh, you know, the, the processes, the, the field and, uh, you know, the kind of streams from which we are expecting to get energy from other than oil and gas, they are still at a relatively nascent stage. We have made lots of advances in the last uh, couple of years, but there's, there's still a set of, uh, uh, you know, uh, novelty that is associated to it. So the oil and gas industry will be kind of a stabilizing force in, you know, for a few more years to come. Uh, but the demand, uh, uh, like you know, whoever raised the question kind of points out will eventually decline, but it is definitely going to be there for a few years. Probably you know, at least 10, 20 years more, there will be certain demand. It may not be as high as it was 10, 20 years ago. It is certainly not that way. Already there is a reduction and it will further go down also. But there will be at least a small demand. So the next question is from Rahish. So he is asking the question like, what are the qualities that a chemical engineer needs to be um, effective in his industry? What are the qualities that a chemical engineer must have for what? Uh, to be effective, maybe in job sector and all. So it's basically the qualities of an electric chemical engineer. Yeah. Qualities of a chemical engineer. Okay. So first things first, I think uh, as a chemical engineer, you should have a good understanding of the fundamentals of the discipline, which, you know, is uh, whether it is mass transfer, fluid mechanics or process control. 
or thermodynamics, you should have a good foundational base in your discipline. The second thing is you should be pretty good with uh, you know using data and making inferences from data because if you're working in the industry, there is going to be a lot of data around you and you should be pretty good at looking at the data and making factual inferences and decisions based on it. The third thing would be to keep a, a good eye on quality because as a chemical engineer, you are probably going to be designing a process, designing an equipment that is going to be used in a process, or you're going to be operating a process or design, you know, an equipment that is part of a process. So ultimately you are producing something for which somebody, somebody is going to buy. And you should certainly have, you know, an eye for quality to make sure that your customer, you know, gets what they asked for. That is one thing. Another thing is, uh, 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 you know, in terms of sustainability. So as an engineer, you know, there is a lot of energy and resources that are invested into, you know, chemical reactions for, you know, producing whatever chemical reactions or processes for producing whatever it is that you want. So as an engineer, if you are very you know, particular about making the best possible use, the best way to use those resources without wasting them, whether it is energy or water or you know, what, whatever raw materials that you are using. So that is one thing that uh, is certainly a quality that one should have. So the next question is like, how was your experience of attempting uh, this DE mains or HRP entrance exams? And can you give us a few last minute tips uh, on what to do, what to not do? or what's your advice about these exams, for these exams? Okay, it's been quite some time since I thought about entrance examinations, but uh, it comes back again. So um, my experience was pretty good. Uh, although, uh, uh, you know, I did definitely write the JE mains. I did also qualify it. But, uh, uh, you know, in terms of preparation, I, uh, I kind of remember that I focused a lot, even at that time, on you know understanding concepts to a great deal. That I kind of uh, many times ventured out of the syllabus to learn things. But uh, what I would advise you at this point in time, looking back, is to focus probably on speed. So understand what is required and make sure that you're able to solve those questions on time. So that requires a lot of practice, which I, I think at that point in time I did not focus much upon. But that is the tip that I would give you. Whatever you understand, you know, whatever the questions that come up in uh, the AEEE or JE or whatever engineering examinations are, the, the, they are 90% or I'm, I'm not sure exactly what percentage it is at least. They are mostly focused on your, uh, uh, you know, 11th and 12th curriculum. So make sure that when you are in 11th, uh, you know, don't take it as a, a chill year. Uh, do try to understand the concepts from that point onward. And, uh, you know, kind of repeatedly keep practicing to solve those questions on time. So that is probably one important thing that I did not do. And probably I would suggest that you do. The next question is from Kamalesh. So he is asking, like, why you choose Amrita? Uh, why did I choose Amrita? So there are lots of uh, reasons. So uh, one was because, uh, uh, you know, Amrita was located in Koyamathur, where, you know, which is a good city, I would say. And then the university is, you know, there, there's, it's not only an engineering college, like a lot of Anna University colleges are. There's this kind of university atmosphere that you see around you, which is pretty good. So around you, there are students also studying science. There are also students who are studying, uh, uh, you know, MBA. There are people pursuing other research uh, uh, ventures in you know, engineering. So it's, it's good to be in that kind of a, a, a university atmosphere. And uh, that I found was quite vibrant in Amrita. Uh, and uh, in terms of the uh, chemical engineering department, because I was pretty uh, quite sure that you know, I wanted to pursue chemical engineering. So some of my school seniors had uh, already you know, uh, pursued uh, chemical engineering from Amrita and I had uh, really good feedback from the program, about the program, about the faculty from them. So based on all these reasons, I chose to you know, study it. The next question is also from Rahesh. So the question is, sir, can you tell me about the most challenging project that you have worked on? The most challenging project that I have worked on?
maybe students are interested to know about what are you doing or how this is happening and all i would say probably that uh, one of the most challenging projects that i worked on till date there was a competition called chem ecar that we kind of tried to participate in when i was in my third and fourth year and that was to build a car that would be powered by a chemical reaction so you know i still remember that as a group of students we spent a great deal of time trying to understand and trying to build certain batteries from scratch to you know power uh, a car and uh, uh, to build a small prototype the size of a box so uh, you know it took a lot of work and i think uh, that is one of the most challenging projects i worked on till day i from that experience i kind of understood how difficult it is to translate something from an idea into reality because in theory we had kind of figured it all out we said okay this is going to be the reaction this is what we need we had done some calculations we said okay this is going to be the size and this is where we are going to get the materials from and this is what we will do but when we started putting things together we kind of started seeing all the things that could go wrong were going wrong and we had to kind of think on our feet to kind of solve those uh, uh, challenges which were coming up and uh, you know with the kind of uh, constraints we had on time uh, in terms of resources in terms of cost and facilities uh, i think it made it the most challenging project that i've worked on so now another question is from hoshita so she is asking is there any personal advice you would give to someone who is entering into this field of chemical engineering definitely i would say um, for somebody who is expecting to get into chemical engineering um, do not expect that your you know your work is going to definitely involve uh, you know working with chemical reactions all the time for example i am a chemical engineer uh, i work in the paints industry and in the paints industry you know uh, well large extent there are no chemical reactions involved so that could be kind of surprising to know but uh, that is what the reality is so the advice is to keep your you know options and mind open to all possibilities so like you said there's a lot of uh, uh, focus on uh, computational sciences which are coming in so as a chemical engineer do not be surprised if your project or your even your assignment or your role requires you to do a lot of programming because that is definitely a possibility so keep yourself uh, open to all possibilities learn everything that you can and be ready to take on challenges whatever they may be so these are things that could probably be you know uh, the kind of tips that i would give in for somebody who is starting out into the field um, so students are also interested to have an idea about your future plans uh so i do have future plans but uh, uh, i think this may not be the right uh, platform to share them at this point in time <laughs> so you can certainly follow me on linkedin uh, you know where you know i will definitely keep you all updated about you can post your contact details if possible in the chat box also so that your our students will be directly Uh, will be able to contact you directly uh, so i think uh, we have covered almost all the questions which is related to chemical engineering and uh, i wish uh, it's like the last bit of advice that you could give to our students all the engineers anything that you wish to say to our students all the engineers is it yeah uh, because we have a lot of engineering aspirants who are into this field and all so it's like they are really happy to have uh, something they really happy about something they received from an engineer who is already in the industry okay so one thing uh, probably i would once again like to touch uh, uh, back on uh, what i was uh, you know mentioning earlier so these days despite whatever is your uh, uh, you know primary background let us say whether that is chemical engineering or mechanical engineering or computer science engineering there is a lot of work that happens these days which is you know extremely interdisciplinary so when you enter into an industry you will see that you know a lot of people are working together to get a certain thing done and uh, it really helps that if you have this awareness about what's going on in the other fields of engineering as well 
you are able to be a very good contributor for these kind of projects. So, for example, if I am a computer science engineer, you know, I'm obviously, you know, focused on creating and, uh, you know, developing software apps. But where are these apps being applied? They're not just being, uh, uh, you know, used for other coding purposes, it's not just software that you're creating. They definitely have an application and that application could be probably in some other area. Let us say, for example, in, uh, in physics. So you're creating a software to kind of help understand how particles behave at very low temperatures. You're writing a piece of code to kind of model, uh, uh, you know, uh, how a salesman is traveling from one point to another and what would be the best way to do it. For example, one company like Amazon, which is, you know, a big software recruiter these days, a lot of their work is focused on optimization, uh, you know, of uh, supply chains. So what I'm coming to get at is a lot of interdisciplinary work happens these days. And uh, no matter what engineering discipline you choose to pursue, keep in touch with your friends in your other disciplines and also talk to them about what's going on in their fields. So that will give you a good understanding of where the world as a whole is progressing towards and what kind of collaborative opportunities you can pursue. Probably you may both end up uh, bringing you know, very different perspectives to a problem and ultimately can you know uh, get to a solution which is very effective. So it is that kind of collaboration that is needed these days. So as engineers, I think uh, we should definitely uh, you know be ready for that. So that's so thank you for uh, information, and um, I hope like our students really feel the session as informative, and most of their questions were answered. And if you have anything extra to ask to our alumni, he has posted his. A mail ID in the chat box and you can directly contact him so he'll be replying to whatever doubt you have which is related to his field which is chemical engineering and thank you so much Rishi Kashyap for coming and having this interaction with the students so thank you so much no problem I think it's always great to be uh, back to Amrita I think uh, after I have graduated I have come back to the campus once or twice because of COVID I have not been able to come back a lot but uh, at least virtually I think it is very great to be uh, uh, present among students who are looking at Amrita as an option for their careers so uh, you know a very uh, warm wishes to all of them and good luck to all of them on their future I think they are at the cusp of making their career uh, uh, you know, progressing from school to college is a very important step. It's a step where, you know, you will experience a lot of change. But uh, you were probably entering into what could probably be the best days of your life. So, uh, you know, look forward to it. And I hope you all have a great time in college and studying engineering. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So now we have another part of the session, which is our foundation program quest. Um, so the quest will start in another two minutes. So we have our quest master ready here. So here's Ashwin, who is the co-founder of Ashweda and uh, the quest house. So he's an avid quester from his school days itself. So I welcome you, sir, for conducting the quest of engineering foundation program. Uh, so I feel I'm like... Curious. Uh, sorry, yes. ma'am, can you just uh, enable screen sharing for me? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just give me a minute, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Sorry. It's enabled, sir. You can just try it now. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry. On a, on a, on a slight, uh, on a chemical engineering route, I am also a chemical engineer. Uh, oh, that's great. So we have two yeah. chemical engineers here. Yeah, so I was actually just uh, listening to what Rishi was saying and what he said in the end was so relevant that uh, unlike I passed out in 2003 and today you have cross-functional teams and you know the ability to be able to work with and get the different perspectives of in any subject that is the most important thing uh, irrespective of whatever branch and more so being a chemical engineer because you're not in the IT sort of a thing, but understanding how it works with your folk is, is very, very important today. I think that is one of the key things for, and for that, I would just suggest people that they read as wide and as much as they can about not just their subjects. So this just a 
another chemical engineer topic there that's all so yeah <clears throat> i'll just uh, i'm uh, sharing my screen now uh, so uh, i have pasted the link for quiz uh, i think in the chat uh, one second sorry i had it just a minute yep the link is here uh, you just type it out in case that is not working uh, so the link is ahaslides.com forward slash f-o-n-d a-m-r foundation amrita you can click on this link and uh, it will take you to the site just pasting it again uh, ahaslides.com i hope you are able to click on the link and the link is clickable even if you can't just go to just type it out in your browser uh, and you should be able to go uh, you need to enter some personal details and then you know we we'll start the quiz in, as soon as we have enough people joining uh, so just a quick uh, uh, for a lot of people who might be attempting the quiz for the first time on an online medium uh, we are not going to be uh, doing this on zoom chat so request to uh, disable chat for participants uh, during the quiz uh, or the zoom chat that is uh, and as i said there are 10 questions 40 seconds per question and the fastest correct answer gives you more points so if you know an answer please answer in the first few seconds you might have to scroll down to get all the options and then press submit uh, we'll have a trial question at the beginning just for you to get used to the how you answer on this medium we'll wait for maybe a couple of minutes for all of you to join questions are related to engineering science uh, and basically the topics which you have covered in the last few days we have tried to keep on that and i'm guessing you are already quite familiar uh, the access code some people are asking is if you get that kind of a screen you please type f o n d a m r if you go to a screen and it asks you for an access code you should type f o n d f o u n d a m r that is the code which you need to type otherwise you can just go to the link which i have pasted directly it will prompt you to enter your name, email, and number, and then you have to, that name will go, and you can choose an emoji of your choice. So let me just uh, move ahead where we will see the people's names appearing. We can have Mokshit, we have many people joining in. Uh, Mahara, you have to click on this link uh, and go. If you can't, and uh, this is the link which you have to click basically if you paste this link uh fond ahaslides.com that's all you need to do there's no other login per se which you need to do uh, if you go to ahaslides.com and you see uh, on the top of the screen there might be enter code if you see like that please enter F O N F O U N D A M R. That's all you need to enter. And once you do join, you should be able to uh, see the thing. Uh, Ma'am, can you disable the chat, please? Uh, as soon as we start the quiz for participants, we don't want people answering on the chat or Q and A. So I can see about ninety-seven, ninety-eight. 99 people now maybe another minute we'll wait it is 653 maybe i'll wait for another minute and then we can start the quiz uh people can join at any point of time again just requesting everyone please don't answer in zoom chat even if you know the answer please just messes up the experience this is a fun quiz and as i said there are there may be some prizes for the winners so would like you to enter your name details enter the quiz and answer on our slides you can do that on your laptop tab phone any of the place if by chance you get logged out of zoom don't worry the quiz will continue on our slides so you will see both the question and answer on your devices and you can answer there so we will be able to see your response don't worry about it Okay, so it's 54, ma'am, we can start the quiz. Okay, I'll start the quiz uh, now. 
uh, as I said, people can join in at a later stage as well. Okay. Which of these gases is called a laughing gas? This is a trial question. It does not carry any points. Is it sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, carbon monoxide? Just select an option, press submit. Uh, organizers, please disable chat for participants. I can see people putting on the chat. I We will not encourage that, please. Uh, sure, we have, uh, the students will be able to chat with only hosts. So we have changed it. They'll not be able to chat with everyone. No, the everyone can see, can't can't see the chats, is it? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, okay. Then it's okay. Okay, looks like many of you know the answer. This is indeed nitric oxide, which is also used even now as an anesthetic. Uh, it used to cause a bit of deliriousness. That's why it was called life and gas, invented by uh, Sir Humphrey Davy way back. Uh, still used as in dental procedures in certain places. Okay, so here's the first question of this quiz. The traveling salesman problem is one of the famous mathematical problem. Which of the following is an application of it or where it's used as an application? Is it DNA sequencing, truck delivery scheduling, manufacture of microchips or all of the above? One or all of these uh, applications uses the traveling salesman problem to solve the, to make it more optimal, let me put it this way, what, whichever way they are doing. So as you know, traveling salesman problem is a problem which is uh, about a salesman who has to visit all the cities at least once and come back. Uh, the image which you see is possibly one of the solutions of the traveling salesman problem. It is actually all of the above, it, though, as you rightly said, as a lot of you answered, truck delivery is one of the things which looks obvious, but it is also used in manufacture of microchips as well as the DNA sequencing as well. So they all application can be reduced to the TSP or the traveling salesman problem, including uh, the microchip uh, assembly as well. So uh, congrats to whoever got it right. <clears throat> Let's move on to the next question. Question number two on your screen. Now, magnetic, magnetic levitation has been used as a technology for high speed trains. Which country holds the record for the fastest train at 374 miles per hour? Is it USA, France, Japan, or China? Which country holds the record currently, although I don't know how long, for the fastest train which uses magnetic levitation? or as it is called maglev in short form for in the context of trains. High speed trains is there, it's been there for a very long time, reasonably long enough time in many countries. It is indeed Japan, many of you got it right. Although the current, you would say, the, though the leaders, as you can see, the L0 series maglev has 374 miles per hour, very closely followed by the Chinese one at 373, then it's the French one. Uh, again, you see half the trains in this one is, uh, are the ones which are operating in China. And as you can see by this graph, the fastest trains can travel this distance under an hour of New York to Montreal, this kind of imagery which shows. And another quick fact about a rather engineering fact related to the maglev train, especially the Shinkansen, as they are called in Japan, is that the nose resembles that of a kingfisher. Uh, and it is actually inspired from the kingfisher's beak, which causes less noise when it enters the uh, tunnel, which used to be a problem in Japan. And they, because the kingfisher's beak is such that when it enters water, there's minimum splash, which allows it to catch the fish easily. So inspiration from nature, which led to engineering design. So maybe some of you would be those kind of engineers. So looking forward to hear such things from you guys also going forward. Question number three, so shares four, including the trial one. India's R value is 2.69 in Jan 22, which is higher than 1.69 that we saw in the second wave. What is R value in the context of epidemiology? You can see what we are talking about. Is it the moving daily average of infections? 
ability of the epidemic to reproduce its spread, fatality rate in an epidemic, or a recovery rate in an epidemic. What does the R value represent? It was 2.69 in this January, much higher than 1.69, which we saw in the second wave. And as you can see, these are graphs which represent where and how third wave or different waves have proceeded during the COVID. Many of you got it right. It is not R is not recovery rate. R is basically you can say reproduction rate or that's how it came into it. It's the ability of the epidemic to re reproduce and spread. So if the R value drops under one, so sorry about that spelling mistake, epidemic is going to shrink. That is an indication that the epidemic may shrink. So as you might be aware, the, uh, the reason 2.69 or Omicron was very uh, higher had higher spread than the previous delta variant which was prevalent in the second wave however the fatality was much lower it was a much milder variant hence we could really ride through it but this is something which epidemiologists uh, keep figuring out and which helps people figure out where and how uh, the uh, what should i say measures to be implemented in different cities so that's one of the key aspects of epidemiology where, which you might have learned recently Let's look at the leaderboard now. Noel uh, is at number one with 2,000 points, followed by Sai, Rohan, Neha, Nachiketa, Hemant, Akshay, Manish, Sarat. So we'll show the leaderboard after the sixth question as well. So the faster you answer, the more points you can get. So keep that in mind when you are answering. You know the answer, or even if you don't, guess it fast. That would be my advice to you. Question number four. Epidemiology again is also called as the science of DASH. It has provided the knowledge to measure disease burden and can help us live longer. Fill in the black. This, what you can see, is one of the earliest epidemiological maps which was created in London by a scientist by the name of John Snow for a cholera outbreak. That's what I'm just you know, showing and we'll talk about that in the next slide. What of these public health research improving outcomes or long life? What is it also called as epidemiology? It's a very, very guessable answer, I would say. It is indeed the science of public health. The epidemiology has helped people figure out why a certain disease spreads more in a certain area or a certain type of population and what can be done. So once you have that information, you can design a strategy to predict, predict and prevent or help a certain community overcome that disease. And obviously, so John Snow, who, as I said, figured out where cholera spread from in London, and he finally narrowed it down to a water pump or a pumping. That's how water was supplied in London which was very close to this distillery, which is also now incidentally named after John Snow. So what he found was in that distillery, none of them fell sick, but the houses which were just next to it, a lot of people fell sick with cholera. And obviously because of the need, the rations, etc., where had a tinge of alcohol, the virus did not, or the bacteria did not survive there. And, you know, in his memory, this pub has been named as John Snow pub in London. And that is was it is kind of the origin of epidemiology is what it is called. So a lovely story. I mean, you can read up about it, more about it when you get a chance on this. Question number five. In the TV show Big Bang Theory, Sheldon and his friends send the laser signal to some place and receive the signal back. Which famous place is it? You might have seen this series. Is it Moon, Statue of Liberty, International Space Station or Venus? Which famous place did Sheldon and his friends send a laser signal and they received it back? Uh, and you know, again, see them do this experiment. That, of course, is Penny and his uh, boyfriend Zach, whom they made fun of in this episode. If you are following followers of this series, okay, a few more seconds to go, giving you plenty of time to answer this. No, it is not the International Space Station or Statue of Liberty or Venus. It is indeed the moon. 
and one of the reasons they could do it was because uh, when the man mission to moon happened they placed certain reflectors like these which can reflect signals from earth and it also tells you one that people are indeed landed on the moon and second it helps help scientists figure out the distance also very accurately that is the 385000 kilometer distance uh, and uh, of course the signal has degraded because it was in 70s and only so the, there is also a talk that you should put more on your reflectors on it it has also helped scientists figure out the core of the moon etc how the moon makeup could be as well so an interesting uh, science fiction and science reality connection here question number 6 which is not one of the differences between 5g and 4g 5g is significantly faster it is a unified platform it has a higher latency or it uses spectrum better one of them is not one of the differences or not rather the thing where 5g is better or than 4g which of these is the is, is it not a true statement about 5g versus 4g okay few more seconds to go maybe i should have given you guys less of time this <clears throat> yep the statement is wrong 5g has a higher latency it has lower latency than 4g uh latency in 4g networks is currently 50 milliseconds while in 5g we expect that to come down to 1 millisecond so just a quick uh, throw back to the time when 3g ads were there where you know there was an ad of uh, airtel where the a soldier was calling his wife and they showed it like you know like how he's he's receiving it as a video call so uh, that's the 3g call ad from airtel back then when 3g came so let's see how the 5g roll out happens in our country and you know let's see how we can take advantage of that let's look at the leaderboard okay hemant has moved up and so has sarang manish khushi rohan yashaswini good some changes in the leaderboard let's see 4000 points more at stake let's see how that changes people who are joining can also participate in the quiz now don't worry about it okay let's look at this again a 5g question this graph shows the leading countries as per 5g deployment in terms of number of cities 376 284 philippines is 95 south korea 85 canada 81 which is the black dot country which has leading right now with 376 cities covered with 5g is it uk china australia or sweden which country is the leading in deployment of 5g in their country okay few seconds to go get your answers in and time's up Yep, it is indeed China which is dominating the 5G deployment landscape. In fact, 35% of China's towns have already have 5G rolled out. India is planning to roll out 5G by end of the year, uh, hopefully to some of the metros uh, to start with, and we'll soon cover the entire country. Okay, moving on to the question number eight. then a laser takes advantage of the quantum properties of the atom to absorb that absorb and radiate particles of light called dash fill in the blanks with the dash a laser takes advantage of the quantum properties of atoms that absorb and radiate a particular particles of light called a dash what are these called is it electrons neurons photons or quasars which of these is the right answer and that of course you can see the laser resembling sabers from star wars latest movie uh which is what i mean if you are a follower of science fiction you can obviously science uh movies science fiction movies you will appreciate that it is indeed photons which are liberated as you can see the burst of light in a flash tube adds the energy to the rod exciting the ruby atom in a ruby laser and producing the photons and the number become great 
and through the mirrors they pass out as a beam of light that's how the laser works okay let's move to question number let's look at the leaderboard now sarang continues to lead followed by manish rohan yashaswini akshay vinayak shivaran hemant nitin let's look at the last two questions now which company became the first to introduce holographic glasses which enable users to create complex virtual objects this is an example of a holographic glass is it google microsoft apple or amazon which of these companies were the first to introduce the holographic glasses uh, which enable users to create virtual uh, complex virtual objects which of course is very popular amongst gaming uh, but you know there are other several applications of of such kind of glasses No, it's not google it is indeed microsoft who created hololens and their applications range from retail in retail you can see holographic images of objects industrial like this construction and of course gaming and education also there are multiple applications of the holographic lenses called hololens actually by microsoft okay some change so rohan has displaced sarang at the top spot followed by Akshay Vinayak Manish. Let's see if that changes. One more question to go. So, will it be Saran, will it be Rohan, or will it be somebody new? Anyone else amongst the top five who might win the quiz? Let's see. What property of terahertz waves makes them more suitable candidate for X rays and UV? This is, of course, Hull. Non ionizing nature. Not scattered in tissue, stronger absorption of by water, or all of the above. Which of their properties makes them a better candidate instead of using X rays and UV in especially in we are talking about medical application. Non ionizing nature, not scattered by tissue, stronger absorption by water, or all of the above. As you know, Hulk absorbed gamma rays. If you are a follower of science fiction or uh, comics. Uh, he is also, of course, a scientist. It is indeed all of the above. All these properties make terahertz a better tool to image because it doesn't affect the living tissue. It is non ionizing means it doesn't affect the living tissue, better absorption by water. So it can, in fact, terahertz basing imaging systems can help early detection of cancer also in certain applications. So it's going to be an advancement while are not affecting the living things by uh, by their non ionizing non ionizing nature so we come to the end of the quiz let's have a look at the leaderboard one final time okay so we have rohan who is at the top followed by congratulations rohan followed by akshay vinayak very very close quiz i am saying like it's just some 300 points some 50 points or 100 points this this place Sarang is at fourth, Yashasvini, Shivarun, Siddharth, Ayush, Manish, Aswin, Ankit, Virangsh, Neha, Nisarga. Congratulations. Thank you so much for attending. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a very specific topic of quiz, which we had to do, and I hope we did justice to it. Uh, I'll stop sharing and hand over the... Yeah. So, hi, students. I... I, I feel like you have really enjoyed the quiz part and thank you Ashwin for this wonderful quiz. Yeah, students have started typing in the chat box amazing quiz as well. So thank you so much students. And uh, once again, I, I thank our alumni Rishi and also our quiz master Ashwin for this wonderful part of uh, today's session as a part of the FP. And thank you so much students. And we hope you have received some idea through this foundation program. And thank you so much. And your certificates will be available by tomorrow afternoon. So you can log into the same CRP portal and from there you will be able to download the certificate. So if you feel any difficulty, uh, you can directly contact me. Also, you can mail me. So I'll, I'll type my mail ID and the uh, mobile number once again in the chat box. So if there is anything, feel free to contact us. 
So thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that's all. Um, thank you so much, students. Hope this has helped you. Thank you.